prototype that's allowed us to do the first eight patients and yeah. we hope to do another four prior to going into a more miniaturized device for big big scale clinical trials. So nice. so what's what's really unique is that there's no breathing machine attached to these lungs, whereas everything else in the world for lungs to breathe, like in an ICU, you need to be attached to a breathing machine. Whereas this is the device, it, it creates the vacuum and, and and that allows for the lungs to inhale just like how our bone bodies create a bit of a vacuum as our chest expands to allow for our lungs to inhale. And, um, and that's what we were able to understand that the lungs needed and that's what we were able to create in, in part because of, of the uh, research money that Karen helped bring to this lab. This is the actual real-time data that we get from it and this is, it's based on these numbers that we're able to make the decision from from when, you know, let's say Karen's lungs first went on, the numbers were all off significantly and then over about two to three hours with the clot busting drug, they all came into the real beautiful range and, and that's when we, we uh, decided to go ahead. Hello, thanks for watching. Today's video is a very special video to me. It's a tribute to my sister's life and her battle with cystic fibrosis over the last 33 years. Karen to me was an awesome sister she was a mother, a loving wife, and a great family member missed by all. Today was a great day. I was lucky to be part of a renaming of a lab in honor of Karen's life and the work she's done for cystic fibrosis, organ transplant, and awareness for organ donation. Here is her story, told by a very special man to myself and my family and to her husband and her family. Jayan Najenarin, her lung surgeon in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. There it is. I first met um, Karen Brent in 2013 when Karen was being evaluated by the University of Lung Transplant program for being listed for lung transplantation. As I think almost all of you know, Karen was born with cystic fibrosis and over the years the infections that continue to damage her lungs led them to be so badly damaged that they were failing. Then on December 23rd, 2013, Aaron Fried and myself received a phone call about a donor that would suit Karen with regards to blood type and size, but was a type of donor that we'd never used before because that donor had passed from a large volume of blood clots lodging in the lung. So, at that point, we, we talked about what our options could be, given that Karen was a little bit of a smaller stature woman and, and waiting longer might mean that she may never get a chance of transplantation. And Darren and I at that time were studying a new way to treat donor lungs outside of the body by taking them from the body and putting them in an environment where we might be able to improve their quality. And so that technique called ex vivo lung perfusion, we brought forward to, to Karen Brent and asked them if they would consider this opportunity and have the faith in us to, to try and do something that has not been done um, at our center ever before. And Karen immediately said yes, with an exclamation mark. And there was almost no hesitation in their mind. And so we went on then to, to procure these organs and Darren and I were thrilled to see that once we were able to take those lungs outside of the body and put them on a machine and then perfuse or flow through those lungs, the same clot busting drugs we give to patients with heart attacks every day, we were able to, over a few hours, melt away, dissolve away all that clot burden and show that those lungs were actually quite excellent and, and beautiful organs, in fact. We went on on Christmas Eve of 2013 to transplant Karen, and we were thrilled to see how well she did from the get-go. And you know, at the end, it would have been just a huge success for Karen to have had a good outcome, and she certainly did for her four and a half years after her transplantation. However, Karen was destined to be so much more than just a successful patient story. Karen brought a life and energy to our research in ex vivo lung perfusion and organ perfusion that Darren and I were inspired to push the boundaries and do more. So this journey thus far and our next step forwards in ex vivo perfusion would not have been possible without the belief in people like us by Karen. 
and brand. It is those courageous few who are willing to take that first chance in something new, not knowing if it may work, are those who are blessed with a spirit of purpose. Sorry. Karen believed she had a purpose beyond her illness, and she proved it by being the voice of Exhibo Organ Perfusion in the province. I believe I was destined to meet such a wonderful patient, daughter, sister, wife, mother, and friend to many, so that I have no further to look for inspiration than a Christmas card from the Hamiltons with all the wonderful things that they're doing. I'll conclude by saying, Karen, you're missed dearly by all of us who are lucky enough to have been part of your journey, including all the physicians and coordinators and all the healthcare providers that have been involved with your care. But your life and your legacy lives on in the work we do daily. So in honor of Karen's everlasting spirit, it is with great humility that we rename our lab today the Karen Jane Hamilton Ex Vivo Organ Review.